good to see the things that we've seen in these last couple of games where people thrust into action with uh, Hauser, uh, ably knocking down open looks. Um, you know, and it's uh, nice to see when he does that. Uh, ended up four of 11, but he had a really good game the other night. Uh, you know, four of 11 for three. Uh, the other night, Derek White raining down every potential three opportunity. Peyton Pritchard had a poor shooting game tonight, but I thought was fine off the bench. And we're going to sit here and talk about Cornette. We're going to talk about Xavier Tillman, who was a plus 14 uh, in 27 minutes with eight rebounds and looked damn good in his uh in his spot duty so i don't know if this is the day to be trumpeting the uh to blowing the cornet horn because the guy behind him uh also looked like he had a well, really they good played game together well. in that stretch that but that. it's, right, not it's, it's not a competition it's not a competition it's not a competition they're, they're both tandem. here to help the team win and tillman was awesome tonight um awesome so uh good things off of tonight what stood out for you guys um well yeah you said it a little bit with the with Derek white just going off the way he did keeping teams you know on the defense on their heels at least i just think they just gave him that bit of space that he needed to, to, to just catch fire and it, and it happened um you know drew holiday was 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 solid i think you know obviously tatum was 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 incredible that quick first quarter start you love to see that sort of reminiscent of you know Jalen what he's been doing the past you know uh six seven games uh, but with Jalen out I mean Tatum obviously did what he had to do and and he got going early you know and I just think it's it was one of those games again I don't think the Celtics needed him to in order to beat the Jazz but you know he went off what he did and it's good to see him kind of get back into his offensive rhythm a bit especially with this game against the Suns and it looks like Devin Booker's going to be in it you know it looks like he's back for those guys so they're going to be all in you know going up against the Celtics in Boston and it's, it's great to have Jalen take that take that rest as well but I do think it's time to rest Tatum at some point or at least it's around the corner um but with with uh with all that being said, look, the game itself, yeah, it was it, it was solid. Look, Cornette did his thing. You know, I, I know I know we had to spend some time talking about him because he did the the streak continues of, of solid performances, and this is this is right there, you know, up up there. That that uh Cornette law, the Luke Lob, I was calling it on Twitter. The Luke Lob is, is is real, it's a real threat. I love to see how Pritchard was was going back to it. He did it in Portland last night, did it again tonight, Drew Holiday. You know, was successful a couple of times. Derek White as well. That constant threat as a second unit with Luke, with um, um, with um, Hauser shooting the way he's been shooting. It's a, that's a legit one-two punch there coming off the bench, and with whatever version of Pritchard shows up, it's always a is a plus. On top of, of course, uh, Al Horford. But yeah, look, I want to see more of that from the second unit for sure. I want I want to see them more comfortable out there because I I do think uh, some combination of those guys is going to be important in the postseason. Well, and I'm throw up this comment here, and it's worth addressing because you know at this point in the night, you're going to be looking at. I mean, this point in the season, you're going to be looking at those things. Who's playing I those? What, I think that's what they're trying to figure out tonight. Who's playing of, those bench minutes? At a what combinations? Yeah. Uh, you know, who can you trust? Uh, and 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 who's there? Again, my fear is that after the first round, they're going to have a short leash with everybody, and that includes Pritchard, Hauser, yeah. Cornett, Tillman. Yeah. I don't think you see Brissett ever outside of a blowout, you know, and I understand it goes tight, but if why, why do you think that you keep saying this, John, they keep playing well, because this is nothing. This means nothing in the playoffs. Yeah, but this is an ra- entire season in the playoffs. When it ratchets up and you have people and you have weak spots and teams start to target those weak spots and they, they go at Cornette in the post or they, or they isolate Pritchard and they're not, pulling their own weight it's going to be a quick hook we've seen it time and again and i think that those guys uh, that's where you're going to really see what it's about these games who gives a crap like you know it's this this game was somewhere in between you know playing the denver nuggets and 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 uh and pritchard's aau game where he scored 90 points like it's somewhere in the middle like it's not even close to representative of what you're going to get especially in the set by the second round in the conference finals of the playoffs so that's what i'm worried about it's a potentially quick quick hook with some guys who, who you're a little who you don't fully you'll trust them in the regular season i think that 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 trust is going to be uh tested in the in the playoffs i I, I I could see it for sure. It's just 
I have a lot of evidence in front of me from this season that all of those guys are capable of playing well within their roles and they aren't asked to do a lot. They might get isolated. They might get put into actions. So that's certainly something that could hurt them if that happens. But O'Shea's out there just grabbing offensive rebounds. Luke's out there setting screens, doing handoffs and defending the post. Pritchard's out there knocking down shots and grabbing offensive rebounds. These guys all have very narrow roles and you really only need one of them to step into the game and give you small minutes in the playoffs. So I think all of these guys, depending on the matchup are capable of filling their roles. They've shown it all year. There's very few games where I've looked at any of these guys and said, man, they're really struggling. You can't play these guys. I, I, I they're not the whole, now. Been... It's just a different animal than the playoffs, and that's my fear. That's, I know, I, but it's going to be a much smaller role that they play when they get there. And we've had that debate all year of, you know, maybe a guy goes down, one of those guys have to step into a major role or at least a bigger role than they're projected to be in right now. So that's where I think you have a concern with that group and why you went and got a guy like Tillman for something like that. But if your top six are healthy, John, what do you need? 10 minutes from a seventh guy, 15 minutes. You don't think any one of these guys are capable of that. I don't know. I'm curious to see how it goes. I don't know that you're going to trust. Um, I, I think you're going to get a lot of second quarter subs, regular rotations, and then an extremely tight, hook in that second half um, if you see any signs of uh, of things not necessarily working out uh, the way you want them to. So uh, how much are you going to trust these guys and the type of contributions you're going to get from your bench in the playoffs? I'm still dubious. I'm not saying uh, I'm not saying definitively, yeah, these guys are cooked. Uh, it's just I still don't think we know. And so every time we ask that question, I actually don't know the answer. Uh, I'd like to think that they can do it, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, look, I don't blame you, John. I mean, there's been games, you know, throughout the regular season where you got close to nothing from the second unit, you know, and right. I think that's something. I don't that, think that's true. That worked. What do you mean, Bobby? I mean, you look at the, the it's scoring, yeah, but they're they're not doing the scoring, Joe Sway. Right, but I just think that there's times where you, you look at the ball. That's kind of the just... point, Bobby. You're riding coat. The bench numbers are good on a plus minus thing because you've been riding coattails of starters. Every once right. in a while, when someone pops off, you have a good Hauser shooting game, a good Pritchard Better shooting game, out. or Cornette catches a couple of lobs and he's active. Everyone's like, "Look, see." But like, I, I, again, the numbers, it, the scoring is still obviously way down and. Outside of Hauser, none of them are specialists uh, in any particular right. way. That's the that's kind of the thing is none of them brings you anything other than rest for your starters outside of Hauser, who gives you elite shooting. They are just they're just filling time. And so that's always the fear is like, can you survive those minutes in a play in an intense playoff atmosphere without them bringing you something that is of great value? Because they don't. Pritchard is on and but off. You have and six he's guys who bring you something of great value. So they do, and have... that's why the bench is always fine. Because in yeah, the regular right. season, when you that's run regular I mean. rotations, right. there's three starters on the floor at all times. But are you going to run uh, three, you know, Tatum and three bench guys as you do a ton of times in the regular season? No. Of course not. You know, like so, it's going to get tighter. You know, right now they've they've proven yeah. to not be liabilities. That was a worry. Can they be assets? Can they exactly. be used? Can they be trusted right. in the playoffs? I don't know. I don't know. I think people have a right to like question it for for sure. Like as a collective unit, I just think you you, you see maybe one or two, maybe that second guy was like, okay. Those those are two solid performances off the bench, but that's not a on a nightly basis. I mean, you know, you had those games, but then sometimes you're wondering. I mean, those names change. I guess that's what I'm trying to say, right? Those names change. And sometimes it's Hauser, like it was last night with 20 plus, you know, sometimes it's Pritchard. Other times Pritchard has, doesn't have it that night, you know, and he's having, he's been consistent of late, but that happy medium sometimes I'm not, I'm waiting for the, the, the other shoe to drop. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm, I'm thinking there might be a string of, of games where he doesn't show up at all. And then all of a sudden he's back, you know? So I just think that's why you're not quite sure who those guys are going to be. I mean, it could be Hauser. I had to guess. I mean, after, after Horford, you know, could be he could have one of those games that I think you you look back on during the postseason. You say, man, you know, something's if they didn't have that off the bench, they, they would have really been in trouble. I think we'll have one of those games in the postseason. Al Horford, yeah. I think, would be solid as well. But you know, to answer this guy's question, you know, like that name can change. It can be housed in one night, it could be Pritchard another. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Again, the starters are so good, and when you have three of them on the court at all time, it's not. 
like as daunting as it was in the past before you had to survive lineups that had only one it's totally different than before so you can survive these guys they're the same guys they're just playing with better players before bobby you had lineups that had only one scoring option for the most part tatum or brown and then a bunch of guys and you're like how in the how in the world what happened every time you know like how in the world are you going to survive here when you had Jalen Brown and a non Tatum lineup against Miami last year. And they're like, okay, we'll just go zone and they won't score for six minutes. And then we'll pick on this guy and get a bunch of easy buckets. Everybody'd be like, Oh my God, get, get Tatum back in the game. And that was with some of the same bodies that we're talking about. Now they benefit from playing around great players all the time. So again, you can hide them a little bit. I just don't know, you know, in the playoffs, how that's going to play. That's all. It's always been, that's always been my concern. Always been my concern with this team. I think I think we're fooling ourselves if you just look at the regular season and be like, they were fine here, they'll be fine there. Yeah, but it hasn't been a regular season where they've gone up and down and there's been these crazy, you know, great games from the bench. Or, man, the bench killed you this night and it's back and forth. I think they've been pretty steady and consistent throughout the year. And like you said, because of the fact that you have players who are doing so much among the top six, you're asking Hauser to hit threes. You're asking Cornette to guard the post. You're asking, you know, just guys to do what they're good at. Even Brissett, like he just comes in and grabs three, four offensive rebounds every time he comes in, like it's nothing. So these guys have been consistent. They all focus really on one thing each. I think they've all gotten better at those individual things as the time has gone on here for the guys who have been here for a little bit. And sure, you have concerns about Cornette against certain types of offenses that are able to spread guys out in space. You have concerns about Pritchard, who sometimes just doesn't have a shot in these games, and it's similar for Hauser. But if you're just talking about, like you said, going in, out there and holding the line, I think they're all capable of doing that. And more often than not, I think you've at least gotten one good contribution off that bench in every single game this year, which is all you really need come playoff time from this group. When, so when they get when they get exposed it looks really bad. And that's why people have a freak out. Cause sometimes how many times like, does that happen? I know, but when it happens, it's happening against a good team that you're going to face in the playoffs. And when it does happen, you're like, Oh my God, these guys aren't playable. So when it happens, it's more of a indicator so of what potentially could happen later on versus getting away with it against bottom feeding Eastern conference teams or the, you know, games where, you know, there are starters injured or other people have thin benches too. And you're playing with three starters. Again, it's Boston's second unit. If you're playing a team that doesn't have Boston's juice in the starting lineup and they're down a player and you get into their second units, you're, you're talking about the Celtics have three starters in Cornette and those guys have one playable player and a couple, it's always going to be, a mismatch there it, it, again. That's why I think and, they have a good dynamic here. People want to see them go out and get Alani Walker. People want to see them go out and get all these different scorers off the bench. You have enough scoring. You have enough playmakers, shooters, all the rest. You need guys who do little things, and that's what all the guys off their bench do. So maybe you're going to end up being right, John. And you know, and I'm not I'll be saying the- I'm right. I'm saying nobody knows. And people in the comments being like, "Oh, it's so negative." It's not. I I'm just, just going off what we've watched so far. I'm and I'm going off what we don't know. And so I'm just saying I'm not convinced of what we've watched is translates directly in the playoffs. I am a little bit concerned. That's that's it. Uh, I'm a little bit concerned with these guys because you've had they're not new. You you've had corn you've had Cornette Pritchard and Hauser on this team and been afraid to play them Didn't in the we, playoffs. Yeah, we criticized them last year for not and playing. And so Hauser. the same guys did not get leaps and bounds better. Everyone around them got better. So the same guys you were scared of playing last year, you're all of a sudden confident this year. I don't know. They're the same guys. You know, they look good because they've got people around them. You didn't, you had, nobody could throw a lob last year. So half of Cornette's offense was neutralized. You know, like it's, it's, <laughs> they haven't been able to throw a lob for four yeah. years. Well, I love the fourth we, quarter we tonight. Those great hands too. Yeah. The fourth quarter tonight's great to me because you got to experiment with things you might do in a playoff setting if you really need to. Down a guy. You'd thrown Tillman and Cornette out there together. I think Holiday and White were leading that lineup, and then you had Hauser out there with them, Pritchard at a certain point, and you went on a 20 nothing run. I know it's a Jazz. I know it's a shorthanded Jazz team without Markinen, but to be able to, leaning on those guys, go on a 20 nothing run, it, it just speaks a lot to is it, the way those guys are fitting their roles. Isn't this crazy? 
Cornette's probably had more lobs than Rob had last year. That's how <laughs> bad. That's how bad the people handling the ball, Point Tatum and Marcus, were at getting. You know, like <laughs> it's insane.